One of the ways that you can install EL Donation Tracker on Linux would be to clone the Git repository. So I'm going to show you how to do that here. So first, uh, you go to the website. Um, now you may have started out um, on this site, um, and then you can he click here to view on GitHub. And so you would go clone or download, and then uh, here where it says clone with HTTPS, and click on here to copy it to your um, clipboard. And then let's come back over to our um, shell. All right, you do git clone, paste that in, or you could have hit shift insert. It'll copy it to your computer. It's not that big, two, two, almost two and a half megs, no big deal. So change into that directory. All right, so now the first thing you need to do uh, in here is create a virtual environment um, so that you don't mess with any of your um, pip packages that are on your system. So um, we'll do that right now. What you do is do you Python. Now, if you have an older system, you might need to do Python 3 on Fedora 31. Python is Python 3. So Python MVNV dot. All right, it's going to create a virtual environment. All right, and now what you need to do is um, pip install. Um, oops, hold on one second here. Sorry, I was uh, doing the wrong syntax there for a second. It's, uh, pip install r and then uh, requirements.txt. Oops, sorry. And that'll grab all the requirements needed here. Um, you'd, you, you'd use this version versus PyPy if you're going to um, do some uh, development or if you're going to, um, uh, you just for some reason don't want to use PyPy. So normally you'd use PyPy, but so you've got this. So now you've got all the dependencies there. So now you just change directories into EL Donation Tracker. And here you'll find GUI.py. So just hit Python, GUI.py. There you go. There's your GUI. And uh, you'll you'll see here in your command line window, there's a bunch of settings telling you where it's looking for persistent settings. Um, it's giving you a whole bunch of messages about what's going on. And um, right now I'm going to cut to uh, Windows because the GUI functionality is exactly the same on Linux and Windows, and so I just decided to record that once. And so um, that'll show you how to use the GUI. And then after that, it'll uh, show you how to use it within OBS. So there we go. All right, this portion of the instructions are gonna be the same whether you're running Windows or Linux. Um, so the fact that this is uh, Windows here um, shouldn't concern you. Uh, the only thing that should be different on Linux is that um, you'll have a Linux um, command line and this will be different depending on the uh, window decorations that you're using in um, KDE or GNOME or i3 or whatever the heck program you're using uh, if you're running this in Linux. So the first thing that you should do is go to the settings. All right, so the first thing you need to edit is the participant ID. Where do you get that from? Well, here's my Extra Life page, and you see all the way at the end of the URL, it says participant ID equals, and then a number. So you just want to copy that number, put it right in here. The next thing you need to change is the text folder. So the way this program works is it's going to create a whole bunch of text files representing things like how many people have donated, uh, what the latest donation was, um, who the top donor is, all those type of things. So it's going to go in that folder, where whatever folder that happens to be. I use Dropbox so that I can run um, this program on Linux or Windows, and either way it's going to update the same files. Uh, but you can put it in any folder anywhere on your system, and we're going to use that later when we set up OBS and XSplit. Next is the currency symbol. It's probably going to stay a dollar sign, but you can make it whatever you want. Then there's the team ID. Where do you get that? Well, just like the participant ID is at the end of your URL, 
I'm in the giant bomb team. If I click on the team, it says team ID equals whatever. And so right here, it's 50394. And so 50394 is what I have here. Um, the last two things are your tracker image and your donation sound. So um, you can click here and you can pick any um, image that has a transparent background. That is to say, if you opened it in GIMP or Adobe Photoshop, the background should be checkerboard. Okay. This image of me here is an example of a transparent background image. So um, if I were to take this image, I would appear solid and anything I put this on top of um, would just appear right behind me. For example, I use this when I'm making um, YouTube video um, uh, thumbnails. And so uh, if I turn this on right here, you can see there's the background right behind me. See, so you want an image that's like that. Um, so right now um, I include an image in the folder that had the GUI.exe. It's the engineer from um, uh, Team Fortress 2. And I, I think uh, especially because that belongs to uh, Valve in the future, I'm gonna change that to be the um, Extra Life logo. But anyway, that's included there, but pick any image you want that has a transparent background. And then for the donation sound, I've included a sound of my daughter saying you have a donation. That's also in the same folder. And I'll show you what that does in a second. And then finally, there's how many donors you want to display. So um, as we'll see when we set up OBS and XSplit, um, when it captures your number of donations and uh, the most recent donors and stuff like that, you can pick however many you want to display. So you can have a scrolling display, you could have a giant list on your screen, however you want to do it. Um, so you change that. So now you can hit save and it'll save to the um, participant.conf text file that was um, in the folder that you downloaded um, and, and unzipped. That's not the best thing to do. And um, as far as I've been able to test, it does not work on Linux with the way that I'm packaging things now on Linux um, because of the fact that the Pi installer is not working as well on Linux as it used to. So what you want to do is hit persistent settings. So you hit persistent settings. It'll tell you where it saved it to if you look here. And I'm using a uh, Python module um, that is called uh, XDG environment, uh, or actually XDG env, but it stands for environment. And that is basically a set of standards of where things should go on your system. So all config files on Windows should go under users, your username, and then da 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 slash config slash whatever. Um, if you look at games like um, Stardew Valley that are cross-platform Linux and Windows, they'll tend to do stuff like that. Um, and on Linux, it'll be under your um, your home directory dot config um, slash extra life donation tracker. All right, so you've persisted your settings. Um, one quick thing I want to mention is keep an eye on this as you're using the program because any errors or anything that comes up there um, will kind of help guide you on to what's going on. So if things aren't updating, look there and it might say, hey, I couldn't connect to the URL or something like that. Um, so I've got data here because, um, like I said, I've got it pointed at my Dropbox and every, um, I think it's 30 seconds. I have this page update itself based on what's on the text files. So, um, before we actually run the program, I want to show you what the uh, image and sound were for. So we're going to click, um, here on tracker. And again, this is something you're gonna to wanna to put into either OBS or XSplit, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment, but we're gonna test it. You got a donation. And that's what will come up. Okay, and it's green screen on purpose uh, for a reason, so you can kind of have that overlay. So every time someone donates um, and it's pulled from the API, that'll come up and you'll see it um, on your screen, which is really cool. So finally, the last thing you wanna do, actually, before we run, one more thing, I'm sorry, one more thing. So I added the help and file menu um, recently and uh, file quit will just quit. Um, when you're running the program, you have to hit stop to finish it. Um, going file quit will automatically be the equivalent of hitting stop. Um, if you go help documentation, that'll bring up this documentation page that I told you to. So you don't need to memorize where that is. You can just go there and that documentation page also takes you back to this page 
So if you want to download the latest version or see the latest um, release notes, that's great. Um, if you go help uh, check for update, it'll tell you if you have an update. I have the latest version, obviously. I just grabbed the latest version off of there. Uh, so that's cool. And then finally, about it's your typical about page and all of these links go to different places. So let's finally go ahead and hit run. So we hit run and you'll see over here, uh, you've hit the run button, uh, loading the config file. That's in case you made any changes since you loaded the program up. And then you'll see um, this URL. Um, that's not important. That'll be going away in a future version. Uh, but you'll see here, it was a 4, 51 and 33 seconds military time. Uh, when I first ran the program and in 30 another 30 seconds, you'll see another timestamp and that's how you know the program is running and it's actually grabbing you data every 30 seconds. You'll see a timestamp. If you stop seeing a timestamp or you get something here that looks like an error, hopefully you shouldn't because I've tried to put, um, well, you may see errors, but hopefully it won't exit out of the program. I've tried to put, um, uh, try to catch all those exceptions and kind of give you something to show to let you know what's going on. Like, hey, I couldn't reach the URL or hey, check your donation ID. Maybe that's wrong, right? So you can see it just went again. And so every time it does that, if someone has donated in between that time, it'll appear on here and it'll do things on your XSplit or OBS screen, which I will now show you. Okay, so here's OBS and here's how you can use the files, the text files that are created by the program. So what you want to do, um, so I've got this um, preview program set up to not have this infinite thing here. I figured that out uh, last time I made the instructions for this. So all you do is you come here under sources and let's pretend that this yellow screen represents a game, right? So uh, color source, instead of being a yellow color source would be a game source, right? So you're playing a game there. Um, and so you want to show something on top of on top of this, right? So actually, first of all, for the tracker, um, this is a, a window capture. So you go start um, doo -doo 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 -doo, window capture. I'll actually make a new one. Tracker new, just to show you. Tracker new. So you go here, you go to tracker, and you'll see there's the tracker. All right, so I'm not going to make this green screen yet. Let me just show you. I'm going to pull the program off the screen just so I can hit the test alert button. Remember that button that I showed you here that will that'll trigger it. Actually, I'll push it here. This should show you. You got a donation. There you go. Oh, yeah, and there's the other one I have set up, right, that I have already green screened. And it goes away, right? So what you'll do is you'll, um, on here, you'll click on filters. You'll add a filter, um, chroma key. It's automatically going to assume green. Now it's gone. And so now every time that someone makes a donation while the program is running and it's a new donation while it's running, then you just hit test you alert got a donation. and there you go. Um, one important thing for you to do after you've got this all set up and, 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 and all that, the next time you want to run this because you're going to record a streaming session or you're going to record a, a video on demand is you want to start um, Extra Life Donation Tracker Hit the tracker button to make the window pop up. Um, that's uh, this window here, and then start OBS. If you don't, it'll it'll try and make this window tracker instead of the other one. I don't know why that happens, but that used to also happen with the other program I used to use before I developed mine. It's just some quirk of the way these programs work. Um, so there, there's that. That's really neat. But what else can you do, right? So you can click here, and you do a text. Um, GDI plus and um, so I've got top team donors already actually I'll show you what that looks like so those are the top people the top five donors to the team um, and so um, again I'm not sure if I've triggered it yet for the teams but for anything that has to do with the participant that's where you're under your settings window where you have donors to display that's that governs how many show up here um, so for me, uh, I've only got two donations, so that's the most you'll ever see as I add my stuff here. So you can add, sorry, add one of these, and let's do um, uh, res uh, last donor, right? So then you do read from file, and you click on browse, and then last donation, name amount, and it was Sean, we hit okay, 
do, 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 do. It's tiny. Um, that's probably not, you probably don't want to grow it like that. You, you probably want to do is go here. Um, and then under font, make it a big font, like 48 or something. Uh, right. And then let's say you're actually looking at the screen that look like that. That's still kind of a bit small. Um, let's see if we can go a little bigger. Uh, 48 is the biggest. Oh, no. I think you can type whatever the heck you want here. So I'm going to type 144. There we go. So there's that may or may not look great on yellow, but you can always change the color, right? So go back here, um, select font. Oh no, not font, sorry. Over here, select color. You can pick whatever color you think is gonna work well against yellow. So here we've got a little hot dog thing going on, red on yellow. That's what that would look like. Again, assuming yellow is the game that you're capturing. Um, what else might you wanna do? Well, this works a little bit better when you have a lot of um, people, but let's say scrolling. Uh, so I've only got two donors, so it won't be as cool as if I had like 10, but you know, it's, it's only March. Um, so if we go to last and donations name amounts horizontal, that means they're going to be like this. Whereas if you don't do horizontal, if you do, um, the one right, let's see, last name, donor, right? this one, it's, it goes this way. Uh, and then messages, whether or not they left a message, we both didn't, so that's why it says none. Uh, there we go. This is the one that's like this without a message. But let's say you do horizontal. All right, so now you've got, and let's actually, let's make it really big uh, since I don't have a lot of donors. So that'll force it to actually give you a scrolling effect. Let's go even bigger. I like 144. All right, so here's, um, the thing and you're like, Hey, it's cut off. What the heck? So right click on it filters, scroll, and you want to do a horizontal scroll. You can pick a crazy fast speed. You can go backwards for some reason. You probably don't want to go backwards. Um, and so that'll go like, that's really fast. <laughs> you probably don't want to go that fast. Um, let's bring that to a more reasonable pace. Like you might see on the news. So that would look like that. And so if you had a lot of donors, you'd kind of see them scrolling by. Like I said, you can set that to any number, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, and if they had messages, because um, um, you are able to leave messages on the Extra Life page, they'd be able to show the message. Again, if you wanted to do the message version, that would be um, the one that says message on it. <clears throat> if they don't leave a message, I just have it as none. So there you go. Um, so yeah, and just really quickly, we'll go to the last donor here, um, not select font. I meant to click on browse. These are all the things you could show. You could show the team captain, the team goal. You can show the number of participants, um, how much you've raised so far, right? So 50 bucks, we have raised 50 bucks. And so you could have total raised, you can have your goal and show the numbers going up on game day or whatever day you happen to have lots of people, um, donating to you. Um, again, this is what it would look like. Imagine a game behind the yellow. And that's essentially how you use the program. So, um, just to recap, you start it up, um, set your settings. Uh, if you click on persist, persist settings, you should never have to set it up again. Even as I continue to release up updates and upgrades to the program. Um, and then, uh, once all your settings are good and you've tested it with the tracker, and everything looks good, you just hit run. If there's no errors on the command line screen, um, that would be this screen, which has been going for a little bit now. If there are no errors on there, then you are good to go. And uh, when you're done, you hit stop. And then next time you wanna play again, you just start it up, start the tracker, start OBS, hit run and go, and everything's great. And, you, and you'll be able to have thing, these things change as people donate, so. I hope that's uh, useful, and if you have any bugs, feel free to go to the GitHub page and uh, open up an issue. I've already um, solved quite a few in 2019 for other people. So, uh, happy uh, streaming. Remember, it's for the kids.